Hi, I'm Dave Taylor, and today is Friday, August 9th, 2013. And I am standing at the end of Dense Meadow, more commonly known as the place where John Wilkes Booth and David E. Harold sit across the Potomac River. So on Thursday, April 20th, 1865, after hiding out in the pine thicket near Rich Hill for several days, Thomas Jones, the man who had hid the pair in the pine thicket, called upon Booth and Harold in the pine thicket and told them the coast was clear to make the attempt to cross the Potomac River, which is this body of water in front of me. He brought them pretty much exactly where I'm standing. There is a little unnamed stream that runs into the Potomac right here. And here you can see the mouth of it, how it looks today. A little stream, it is unnamed, and it goes back a bit there. During the time that Booth and Harold were in the pine thicket, Thomas Jones had his former slave, Henry Woodland, go out on a 14-foot uh, flat-bottom boat and went fishing. He told him to take it out and go fishing every day while Booth and Harold were hidden in the pines. So that, when the time came for them to try to cross the river, it would not be suspicious that there was a boat on the river. For most of those days, according to Henry Woodland, he kept the boat at Allen's Fresh. Allen's Fresh is further south in that direction. However, Jones went to Allen's Fresh every day and that was where he had hoped to send the pair across because it would be closer to their destination. But with the troops about, he decided that wouldn't work. And so the day before, or two days before, I believe, they decided to make the attempt to cross the Potomac. He had Henry Woodland bring the boat and hide it here in this stream. Then, on the night of the 20th, after they made their way from the pine thicket to Huckleberry, where Jones went in, but the fugitives did not, he asked Henry Woodland, who was there, if he had put the boat where he told him. Henry Woodland said he had. And then Jones, without telling Henry Woodland what was going on, brought the pair down the uh, kind of rocky slopes down here to the edge of the Potomac River. He got the boat. They pulled it out of the stream where it was hidden amongst the underbrush and covered with things. Pulled it out, and they put it on the river. Jones' advice, or more his direction to Booth and Davy, was to go that way. Now it's hard to see, especially in the camera, but the Harry Nice Bridge, modern 301, goes across right here and runs into Matthias Point. Starting here, all the way this way, is Virginia. Matthias Point, Virginia. It's a little peninsula that sticks out. As I said before, he was hoping to send them across at Allen's Fresh, which is further down this way. And he directed them to go about here, right where Matthias Point starts curving back around and enters the mouth of Machota Creek. There was the home of Elizabeth Cusenberry. And Jones gave them a candle. Booth had his compass. He directed Booth on how to use the compass and what direction to steer, and he said to go to Machota Creek, to the home of Elizabeth Cusenberry, who would help them as long as they told her that Jones had sent them. So that was where they were supposed to go. They started off from here, and they started rowing. Something happened while they were rowing that threw them off course. John Wilkes Booth wrote in his diary, that they were chased by gunboats. And there were Union gunboats patrolling the Potomac. And it could be that their little boat rode up right next to one, saw the running lights, and they stopped rowing, and the currents pushed them a different direction. Or it could have just been the wind, the strength of the currents, or other unknown waterway effects for that night that made it so their route this way didn't go as planned. And instead, they ended up away from Matthias Point and they landed there. That is still Maryland. That, you can see the land sticking out 
right there. On the other side of it is the inlet for Nanjamoy Creek. And where they landed at the farm that belonged to Peregrine Davis, who at that point was uh, having his son-in-law farm the land. Son-in-law name was John J. Hughes. Hughes let the pair stay on the property, but they stayed not in the main house, but on a, in a cabin by the water's edge. And they stayed there from the morning of April 21st until the night of April 22nd about 36 hours. Then they attempted to cross the Potomac again. So they crossed to Matthias Point and then probably stayed by the shoreline and then managed to get almost to where they wanted to go. Instead of reaching Mrs. Cusenberry's in Machota Creek, they went on one creek that was one creek north, Gambo Creek. They put the boat in there and then Harold got out and walked to Mrs. Cusenberry's. After that, they found a guide who took them to Dr. Stewart's Claydell. But this is the location where Booth and Harold attempted to cross the Potomac River. The reason I can come here is because I've made previous arrangements with the current owners of the property, which is the Loyola Retreat House, which is a Jesuit retreat. On the John Wilkes Booth Escape Route Tours, sponsored by the Surratt Society, they bring you to the, the retreat. However, they do not let you come down here to the river because the cliffs are a little precarious and it takes a great deal of effort to get down here. So this is the stream that Henry Woodland hid the boat. Then they would have brought it out. Jones directed them that way. Instead, something happened to land them up there. And then eventually, 36 hours later, they managed to get into Virginia. Now there is a picture in Osborne Oldroyd's book from 1901 of Henry Woodland standing about, uh, I would say about, on the other side of this dock about there. There's a dead tree that you can't see. Henry Woodland was alive in 1901 when Old Roy was writing his book and took Old Roy down here to show him the different locations. Now, Henry Woodland was not there when Booth and Harold crossed the river. In fact, he, Jones didn't even tell him 100% what was going on, at least at the time. He wasn't sure if he could trust him. Later, Henry Woodland figured everything out, but there is a statement by the investigators that Henry, I'm sorry, a statement by Henry Woodland to the investigators in which he described the suspicious nature of Jones without saying anything too damning to him. So I took a picture about the same location Oldroy would have been standing to get the shot back this way, which doesn't, you can't see the creek, but it does give you some landforms that you can match up, which I've done here. There's another picture of Henry Woodland in this small stream here. Now I'm not going to make my way back there, but essentially it's a picture of Henry Woodland showing Osborne Oldroyd where he left his boat, or where he left the boat. And it's, on, it's in this stream, kind of hidden behind this underbrush. If you have Michael Kaufman's new book, In the Footsteps of an Assassin, there is a nice picture. He bushwhacked his way in and with a wide angle lens got a shot of, the, of this and then the Potomac River from the perspective of the stream. It's a very beautiful place. It's very quiet, except for the occasional speedboat. And if you come during low tide, there is a good amount of beach. So this is the place where John Wilkes Booth and Davy E. Harold attempted to cross the Potomac. It's Dave Taylor. August 9th, 2013, signing off.